Okay, so, uh, yep, we've got, this is a one-day event. Um, we've got a, a quiz coming up um, at the end of the, of the end of this event. So please sign up. I think if, you, if you've uh, joined um, in the last um, hour or so, there is a link to the quiz. So please sign up to that. And then um, this session is um, being brought to you by um, a group of us called the Viva Explorers. Um, so we have on here, um, there are about, I think about 13 of us, but um, for this session, you have me, the Viva Explorer, um, uh, a Viva Explorer visionary. You have um, the tech realist, which is um, Sarah, and then you have our optimistic navigator, um, which is um, Moretta. So me and Sarah are in the UK, and Moretta is my colleague from Cloudway in um, Norway. Um, and Moretta is also a wonderful artist, so she's actually turned this all into, we've all got our own little um, avatar, little cartoon, but you'll see more about that at the, um, towards the end of the session. So this session is about the what, the why, and the how of Viva, and we are going to go through, um, uh, cover the four modules again, um, but there is also a fifth one, um, which is coming towards the end of the year, so I'll, I'll, I'll touch on, on, on that at the end. Um, but you will, we will obviously be repeating um, some of the information and the, um, the insights that you've already heard, but we'd just be all be coming from, um, coming from different angles. So let's start with a wonderful quote by the, um, by the gentleman that's probably just kind of changed the, the behavior of how we're working. So employees leave managers, not companies, as often misunderstood, not listen to or just don't feel managers' behaviour is, uh, is appropriate in the times we're living in. And research says many people want to work flexibly from home, but also want some kind of office culture. Um, and this is being referred to, as Kat said, um, as the hybrid work paradox. So it's a very strange time we're living in. And just look at, look at us all now. All of us is feeder enthusiasts. It's Saturday and we are, um, we are, I think we feel like we're not working because we enjoy this subject so much and we're passionate about it that we all decided this was a great um, session to sign up to in our, um, in our own time. Um, so to avoid or rather manage these challenging situations, you need to learn what we're, what we're describing as empathic leadership, now regarded as a price for, um, in this hybrid workplace. And as Kat walked you through, this is where um, it, Viva Insights really helps leaders to have that kind of like um, empathy around how they are managing their teams because they're, they're monitoring from a higher level um, how teams are actually operating and if they are um, working too much kind of like outside your own um, uh, set, um, set days and um, patterns. So this is the um, ability to understand the needs of employee well-being spanning mental, physical, emotional and economic health across the whole workforce including those very undervalued um, frontline workers. So this is kind of like a very different um, way to, um, to, to manage your business. So um, this is, um, and that gives you an idea. I'm not sure if anyone has um, shared this um, model, um, but this is a model that um, uh, Microsoft is, uh, has been putting out there. But it's, this is what the, an, an, a way of cutting and slicing and dicing and visualizing what an employee experience um, platform actually is. So it's around well-being and engagement, growth and development, purpose and alignment, culture and communications and, and knowledge and expertise. But ultimately, this is the employee experience, which is a journey from onboarding the moment you join an organization to, an, to the exiting of your company. This is kind of like the experience that you go through. Um, and it could be a happy tenure of over up to 20 years, perhaps. Um, uh, many organisations, you know, have people um, uh, on their um, on their staff for a long, long time. And hopefully, you know, you want that to be a, a pleasant and happy experience. And you want to have, you know, some good friends that actually perhaps become um, good colleagues that actually become, you know, friends at work as well, which can make the experience even nicer. So to help this along the way, we have these. Yes, there are five modules. So we've heard about we've all. Um, from the other presenters um, this morning, we've heard all this afternoon, wherever you are, the Viva Insights module, the Viva, we've got, we've heard about Viva Connections, um, Viva Learning, Viva Topics, and then the, uh, the Sorry, newer... Leslie, sorry to interrupt. Seems like they are seeing only the black screen, so I was oh. trying to share. Yeah, maybe I'll okay. share again. Sorry to interrupt you there, but uh, no, here thank we go. You. 
Sorry, I yes, wasn't monitoring chat at I the same time. I can see the slide, but I think you may want to share your screen. That will make things a lot more easier rather than sharing the deck alone. Yeah, OK, so instead of uh, PowerPoint Live, it's better to share the screen. Yes, yes. OK, can you see? All right, so then possibly you need to say next slide, but uh, that's fine. We okay. can do that. Yeah, so do you see the screen now? Yes, so uh, folks so. in the call, if you could just confirm on the chat. Is this is <clears throat> visible now. So. Yeah. OK, perfect. Okay. okay, so I'll whiz back oh. through. So, Moretta, if you can yeah. go. Yeah, so we had a quote. Yeah, just slide slide through. So we had a, a, a lovely quote here from Satya Nadella. Yeah, that one. Hmm. Yeah, so over the past year, no area has undergone more rapid transformation than the way we work. Employee, employee expectations are changing, and we will need to define define productivity much more broadly, inclusive of collaboration, learning and well-being. And this is what's kind of like driven Microsoft to um, to produce you know, from the pandemic to produce kind of like this new suite of or reimagined tools that we've um, had at our fingertips, but we can now get to in uh, many different ways. Next slide. So this is the employee experience platform. This is an idea of it. As I said, it's already it can be sliced and diced in um, many in many different ways. But this is kind of like showing it from um, the, the perspective of of that you from the moment you join an organisation to the moment that you end that you have at your fingertips all of these um, amazing ways of actually getting your job done. Next slide, please. And then these are the five modules, and I think I got to this point. And the fifth module is around objectives and key results, and it um, uh, 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 sits on a platform that already exists called Ally.io, um, and Microsoft um, bought that out um, about a year ago, I think it was, um, and they're now working in the background to actually build that in as part of the Viva Suite. Next slide, please. So we've drawn up this slide to try and help customers um, understand what is actually going on under the hood of Viva. Um, so we've got here for um, Viva Connections, it's actually um, driven by good old SharePoint and if you've got it in your organisation, Yammer. And for Viva Insights, it's um, Exchange and Workplace Analytics. For Viva Topics, that's the new one on the block and it's um, Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning. And then we've got Viva Learning, which again is SharePoint and um, any um, um, LMS solutions that you might be using in your company and also LinkedIn Learning and um, yeah, so it's basically giving you that kind of portal, that one-stop shop to access your learning within or within your organisation. So it's not replacing LMS systems within your organisation. And next slide, I think at this point, I hand over to Sarah and you'll hear more from me um, towards the end of the session. Thank you, Leslie. Um, so I am the Viva Realist. It is my job to bring you up to date to what is currently available. So I'm here with my camera taking a picture and sharing it with you as to what is currently available. So as Kat demonstrated in her session, you can see the uh, Viva Insights in the side rail of Teams and you can access it from there. And um, in Kat's session, um, you saw how this tool can help you track back through your tasks, keep track of your um, your hours that you're working and all sorts of valuable insights to help improve your productivity and the team productivity. Can we have the next slide? I'm not used to saying next slide, I want to click. Um, so uh, we've got the Viva daily briefings that come through these emails and also your um, summary emails that come through in later time periods. These are currently active and available for all users. They are personal. Users can opt out of these emails um, and administrators can also control who receives those emails as well. OK, so as we go on, you can see that currently we've got the ability to protect our time to focus, to help block out 
to help reduce the risk of burnout. We've got the ability to use the mindfulness, the meditation tools, and those are integrating um, also into the focus mode to give us music to help concentrate if that is avail if that is suitable for you. I personally don't like music when I'm trying to concentrate, but I'm a rare, a rare person. Um, you can also create a focus plan either for you or shared with your team if you've got the manager insights component as well. Uh, you can block out your time, your quiet time, and we do have this virtual commute. You can run the virtual commute at set, at set times during the day or pick days in the week that you want to run those for. I tend to run mine twice a week just to keep on top of my tasks and make sure that I'm not missing anything. Now, if you want to set up Viva Insights, there are two modes here. There's the seeded content, as we call it, the free content that's included in your Microsoft 365 licenses. And then there's the premium content. Now, the seeded content is really easy to set up. Basically, it's a few tick boxes in the admin center in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center, and then deploying the app through Microsoft Teams. If you're going to use the Manager Insights and the Organization Insights and really have that power to take it further, the setup is the Workplace Analytics setup, and it's a little bit more involved. But for just the seeded content as a starting point, it is simply those three tick boxes in the org settings in the admin center. Now I mentioned seeded content and additional licenses. So you can see from this slide, the Microsoft 365 licenses include some of the preview, uh, some of the standard features, the personal insights. That's what we're talking about. That's what we call the seeded content um, and those are the things that we've got used to with the daily email and the things that we can see from the Viva app, Viva Insights app as soon as we switch it on in Teams. You can license Viva Insights as a separate product. You do need a minimum of five licenses to start lighting up the manager and the organisation level insights. You can then also license Viva Insights through a Viva Suite license, which includes all of the products. And you can see as we move to those licenses that actually getting the integration between the different Viva modules starts to come really into its own once you get the suite license. I've got some coming soon items on this slide, but I'm going to hand over to Moretta to tell you about the roadmap and what's coming soon, because after all, that's what Moretta um, specialises in, her persona. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Sarah. And you see, I have my map. And actually, this is the you know the, what we do in the old fashioned day. We used the paper app, but the paper map. And now we are actually navigating through our digital world, right? So here we go. Uh, and yes, there are really many good good things coming <laughs> at all times. And and I guess what we all have realized is that Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Viva and all of this collaboration and communication that we are living in is a, a, a live uh, beast, so to speak. It's continuous evolving, continuously changing. And Microsoft is also listening to the customers, to the partners, to anyone who are working out there in, in this field and they do changes and they do make updates um, trying to cater to all the different needs. So that is that is good. And there are so many good things and I'm going to keep, keep this short. And I think there's a few things on the list here that things are coming and I would do recommend to, to pay attention to the Microsoft uh, roadmap because there's always good, good information there. A couple of things that I want to highlight here is the quiet time and the focused time experience, which is 
really good and 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 helps to to protect your work there and protect you and and we have a saying that if you don't control your calendar somebody else will and and as you probably have oh, hopefully and already experienced you can set up focus time for yourself and you can also set up quiet time when you will not you can decide uh, you can add information which when is your work day starting and when is your work day closing so that you don't get messages after 5 p.m or 6 p.m or depending on when your work day is, is closing and as a manager which is which is really making these tools are helping managers to become even better managers and as you're a manager your first job is to protect your team right to make sure that they have everything they need to have fulfilled and good work days and as a manager in viva insight you can define the quiet time for your employees for your team by setting that they should not be disturbed after a certain time or not be expected to answer emails after a certain time or before a certain time and then as an individual you can then decide that for yourself these are really good to to set up and what is happening when you add the focus time that you do on an individual level what happens then there are some magic happening when you have those focus time set in place because what happened when that clock ticks and your focus time starts everything else around you sort of get muted because there's an, an status field in your team saying that you are focusing that tells every colleague of you that they should not disturb you now because you have your focus time and you're concentrating deeply so that is really really good things you don't have to remember all of these things because as soon as the focus time sits in it starts so that is good um yeah and what are the benefits of using uh microsoft viva insight for example and i guess this is a situation that maybe somebody working in hr could relate to if i work in hr and our outsource annual staff survey takes weeks if not months to collate or to share it and it's very expensive because uh, i guess now and then we do have to run some surveys you have to figure out how are our, our people doing how are they are there a risk for burnout what is actually happening out there so we can't just uh, use telepathy necessarily so we need to get some facts and get some feedback from our employees so how do we do that well survey is one way if you especially if you have a lot of course you can have interviews and talk with people as well now with viva insight you are continuously having a dynamic dashboard all the time that you can use uh, both on on as we saw in the previous presentation here you both on a manager level as well as an organizational level so you can have that good insights and they're right there uh, and they're measuring also the facts they're measuring uh, what's happening in meetings and in uh, how much are you communicating in emails like like uh, in the previous presentation that how much multitasking are you doing whilst you're in a meeting? So by using the Viva Insight, we share corporate wide plans to improve well-being using tools that quickly support a complex staff challenges and map reactions, enabling easy to reach shared content. And also we get, get that feedback from, uh, we got the dates and the facts. And of course, now and then you can continue do the personal surveys because then you can get some subjective uh, feedback as well. And then you can compare those. What are the what are the dashboards showing you and what are people telling us? Is it the same thing or is there a big gap? Can be interesting. Yeah, and as a leader, you know, you want to know, uh, uh, I want to feel, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> as a leader, I feel we don't have the mechanics in place to regularly easily measure the degree of engagement with our brand, our products, visions, or culture. But now with Viva Insight, I now have data-driven visibility into how work patterns affect well-being, productivity, and business performance. Quick access to company content. Makes it easy for me as a manager to understand what's going on. And also if people are engaged, in, in this company. 
And oh, back to you, Sarah, because now we're going to talk about culture and communications. Yeah, so in earlier sessions um, in the in, in the Viva Days conference today, you have seen people talking about Viva Connections. And Viva Connections is the tool that we can use for communication and bringing our SharePoint intranet into Teams, but expanding that and surfacing content from Yammer, custom apps, and lots of other um, products around our Microsoft 365 and digital workspaces through those custom cards. So really it's about um, keeping up and bringing content into the flow of work. And Viva Connections is very, very simple to set up, but that first step, have a SharePoint intranet, is probably the hardest. You've got to have a modern intranet in Microsoft 365 using the modern SharePoint sites before you can even start to adopt Viva Connections. So once you've got your intranet site set up in SharePoint, you designate that site as your home site through the SharePoint Admin Center or using PowerShell if you, if you flow that way, if you're a PowerShell user. Uh, we can configure the global navigation on that, from that home site in the SharePoint intranet and that opens up navigation across the rest of our SharePoint sites and we can build in teams and hierarchical structure into that navigation to make it easier for our users to maximize their use of the SharePoint estate. And then we deploy the Viva Connections app into Microsoft Teams, start using it on the mobile and obviously we can then extend Viva Connections with those adaptive cards pulling in other systems that we work on and really taking advantage of the power of the SharePoint framework. From a licensing perspective, Viva Connections is the simple one. It's included. Okay, you have a Microsoft 365 license that includes SharePoint, then you've got Viva Connections. OK, you can use all of that functionality, all of those custom cards that's all included in your existing licensing. There's nothing else really to say about that. So that means I'm going to be handing straight back to Moretta to talk about what's coming with exactly. um, yeah. the roadmap. And I did notice one thing from the 2022 list here starting to roll out, the multi-language support. Very exciting, but I won't steal your thunder. <laughs> we can share the thunder always. That's always a good thing. Uh, yeah, and, and I think we saw previously also there, it, and it's really exciting about this um, multi-language supports. And, and then when you have, we had a previous presentation here earlier today talking about that different languages and it goes the same for here as well. Um, it's really exciting because then you are communicating no matter languages. So that is really, really a positive thing. And we already had a, dif a different presentation about the the adaptive cards, which is very interesting. Um, and these can also be target audience, target, you can audience targeting, <laughs> audience targeting. Uh, which uh, the other presenter showed earlier today. Uh, so this is really, really interesting and it brings your intranet to everybody. And there's a shift going on right now because you have, especially if you have a big company, may, maybe some are working on the floor, so to speak. Maybe they are building cars or they are out there making roads. Uh, who knows what they're doing? And then you have those people in the office. And, and for many years, for te many tens of years, this has been different groups because you have those who are in the office, they have the computer and they can pay attention to everything that's going on on their internet. But those on the floor, out in shops or out building cars or, or making roads, um, 
they don't have those. They don't sit by the computers and read their internet. So, so how can you communicate and make sure they get all that information? And that is the beauty of adding the Viva connections to, to your tenant, because then you have, as long as you have a phone or a smartphone where you can actually see a browser or you can get your Teams app, then you will have, um, you will have internet in your pocket. So it's for everybody. Um, so and it is improving, as you see, as as Sarah said. Now you have multi languages, and you can add these adaptive cards. So many good things are coming uh, to the Viva Connections uh, uh, functionality, and it's evolving. And as people are using it, they are also giving feedback to Microsoft. So remember that if there are things that you wonder about, and you would like to see what's happening, or if they're coming, or as a functionality you you think it should have. Give that feedback to to Microsoft. So, what are the benefits of using using um, Viva Connection? And for instance, it would be great if I could access meaningful news and conversations in real time from my phone mobile, like I'm now used to doing, maybe on Facebook and LinkedIn. And that way, I I work the way I work. I, it feels so outdated. And I think many people can recognize themselves in that because they. There may be some colleague are talking about something and, and then you realize I haven't seen that. How do you know that? Because they may be been on their computer and read the internet. And I've been out there building this car. I cannot I cannot see that and I cannot I don't know what this. But now I have secure company content relevant to my role delivered on my mobile in the flow of my work. Up to date and instant like social media. It's easy to reach shared content. And what is this telling us? It's not only I get the latest news, but let's say I'm making this car out in the factory. And I wonder, I see there are some challenges on, on some products here and I have some questions and, uh, and my boss is busy. And my other colleague that I know lots of things, he's also, she is busy. Okay, how can I find this out? Okay, I have my phone. I can find it out very easily because I have the information on my internet. I can not only get the news, I can get policies, I can get descriptions. It's all there in the palm of my hand. Um, and another situation is I'm working in communications and we spend a lot of effort and money on our old internet app, but it has frustrating limitation. Have any here experienced that? because you have a certain set, it has a lot of customizations perhaps, and um, and you call, and of, of course, many times the communication team are many times very, very few, and they have a lot of work to do because they maybe also are responsible for the external press information and newspaper articles and videos they have to make. And then you have all these different people who want to have their uh, information onto the internet and they don't have the time. So how can they improve that? And then it's only a few people who are allowed to do anything on that on that internet because it has these limitations. Uh, because otherwise you can mess it up. But the nice thing is now we rolled out global navigation connections together as the mobile experience via Teams and the staff love it. This is quick. This is quick access to company content. And not only for receiving it, but also producing it by using modern SharePoint communication site, you can delegate to all the department managers to make sure that they update themselves these uh, internet pages for their department, for example. So that gives less pressure on the communication team as well. And it's easy for anyone to just, you have to learn the basic, but after you learn the ba basic, it's easy to maintain and update and keep those pages and information alive and engaging. So very exciting. All right, here we go on a back to to you, Sarah, because like I said, there are some basic training for those who are editors of communication, but also for a lot more. Thank you, Moretta. And um, as a trainer, the Viva Learning module is probably one of the most exciting modules for me. I come into a company, I deliver a piece of training and 
That's wonderful. And sometimes people get it instantly, but other times they need to go back over the information or they need additional sources and people learn in different ways. And one of the advantages of Viva Learning is that we can bring that content into Teams for, for our users and make it really easy for them to find. And it's not just about surfacing that professionally generated fancy video content. It's also about pulling your own custom content from your organization into this learning experience that is easy to search and easy to find and can be joined with those professionally development developed content so our learners our users have got a mix of our content which is specific to how we work as an organization and how we use the tools, but also that generic content that's available from commercial learning providers. And we can set that up really quite simply. Now, if you just want to use the published content, you simply switch on Viva Learning from the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. If you want to pull your content in, what you need to do is create a SharePoint site where you're going to host a list of the learning materials, the custom materials in your organization. Now, those materials are going to need to be somewhere that we can access, ideally in Microsoft 365, in SharePoint. And if you already have dedicated Share, a dedicated SharePoint site for learning materials or for the custom learning function within your organization, then you can place the SharePoint list on that site. Please bear in mind it is one list for the whole organization. OK, now it won't give users access to content they don't already have access to, but they will see that that content exists if it's added to that SharePoint list of content. So we populate that list with links to our content. We've switched on the Viva Learning app in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. We've deployed the Viva Learning app from the Teams Admin Center. This is one that we do need to approve before our users can deploy it. OK. And then it's simply to our users to start learning. From a licensing perspective, you can see that the Viva Learning is available as a seeded app, so it's included in your Microsoft 365 license. If you've licensed the product separately, it's the SharePoint component that is giving us the, the Viva Learning. OK. And what we get with the seeded licenses, with the included licenses, is that ability to deploy the Viva Learning app into Teams. We can add our own content through the SharePoint site and the list as I've just described. Uh, we can add tabs to our Teams, to our Microsoft Teams Teams to surface Viva Learning. And we can also add links to content that we found in Viva Learning through chat messages. And there are some professional content available in that seeded license. So we have Microsoft Learn. There is the Microsoft 365 training libraries that many people don't don't know about. That's included automatically and the top 125 LinkedIn learning courses that LinkedIn learning make available freely. If we purchase a license for Viva Learning. Separately, then we start unlocking additional um, content from additional providers. We also unlock the ability for administrators to curate sets of learning specifically for our users and managers to recommend and track learning that um, they want their staff to undertake. With the full Viva suite and coming soon, we start unlocking 
the ability to link learning to focus time, link learning to Viva Insights. And we haven't talked about topics yet, but we'll leave that one. But there is the integration there that is on the roadmap, Moretta. How soon is it? Is it coming? Uh, yeah, guess what? Uh, it's it's really exciting, and and it's true that. And I think it's important uh, fact of what you say, that Sarah, because all of these different tools and apps also if you look at microsoft 365 and microsoft viva by themselves they are amazing but when you combine them uh, that's where the magic happens for sure and there are continuously thing, uh, things and updates coming and as you saw there are certain things that are for everyone uh, already there uh, that you can uh, just turn it on and everybody can see, for instance, the LinkedIn learning. Um, and also you can combine uh, combine it or integrate uh, other LMS solutions. And uh, for now they've been working on different uh, LMS solutions and integrations. And now they have the, you can basically, what is coming that you can integrate with, with all, all LMS solutions. Now, uh, what is important to, uh, sorry, I saw there was a question about when, but yeah, it's starting to roll out now. Thank you, Sarah. It's it's coming. Um, uh, and what one question I've received a lot is, uh, is if uh, um, Microsoft the Viva Learning is replacing LMS solutions? No, it's not. What uh, Viva Learning is doing is to integrate all the learning that you have, like Sarah said, the the what you have of preparing for yourself and also the external LMS solutions. What we have seen is that, you know, different learning ha can be quite fragmented. Maybe HR has a set of learning that they want their employees to go through. Security have other kinds of learning. Those who are building the cars have different learning. So what is, is bringing it all together in the context of teams or in the context of where you are working. Uh, what is improving is, of course, the the personalized recommendations and the and well, the many things and the reporting and the analysis. Because of for now, you will see uh, as a manager, I will recommend training for my employees or my team, and I can follow their progress if they've gone through the sessions or if they're not started yet. I can have a look at that. But what the overall users have uh, reported back to Microsoft is they want to also see what is the progress and uh, and um, more measurements. But of course, you have, if you have an external LMS solution, they would have their own type of progress and and, um, and measurements. So there's a balancing act there. How what what should be in the LMS solution? So what should you show in the learning dashboard, so to speak, for a manager or for for yourself, and that is continuously uh, improving. Yeah, I run fast for pause next to the, the benefits, of course. Um, maybe sometimes you can recognize yourself in this situation. I find it time consuming monitoring and assigning my team's training activity as well as getting my own work done. And when uh, using Viva Learning, I quickly send my direct reports links to training in a Teams channel conversation and easily track the learning for personal development. This helps me focus. But as a manager, for example, you also have things to do other than make sure people are doing the training. So by this, you have an easy dashboard. You don't have to go to HR and ask which training is it. You just have to, you just assign it. And of course, the graph in the back is working and helping you to come with more suggestion as well. And I don't have time for learning activities outside of mandatory training. Don't we just recognize this situation? Because everyday life is, is busy. You have things you have to do and you get more on your desk and you get more on your desk. And how in the world are you going to use time for study? Because you have to get your work done first and then you get time for study, right? Not. And sometimes it's expected maybe that you should do it after hours, that you should do it outside your work, because when you're at work, you should work, work, work. And I would say if if that is the case, 
then then it's a bad priority because you don't hire people to just make them do work without giving them the possibility to take a breather and gain new insight and and uh, to in to improve their knowledge and also be innovative for for the business because you want also your business to grow you want your business to develop and for your business to grow and develop you need your people need to grow and develop and as a manager you need to set a certain time for that to happen and with viva learning it becomes much easier because you can have a 20 minute here you can have a 30 minute there or an hour there and you don't need to go and find that training because you just pick it up directly from uh, your team's room and what happens i feel extremely satisfied that learning new skills is regarded as part of my working day and my digital well-being this has improved my productivity you know the saying goes if i invest in my people they will make my business right or something like that <laughs> so over to you uh, uh sarah talk about the topics thank you maretta um viva topics is probably the Viva module that has made the greatest difference to me personally in my day to day work. I love the other products, but this one has made life so much easier for me tracking down my content. And I'll explain why in a second. So Viva Topics is looking at the content you've got in Microsoft 365 and trying to turn it into actionable, usable knowledge. So it's organizing your content, not based on where it's stored, but based on the topic it addresses. And have you ever joined an organization and they've used those acronyms and you don't know what they're about? Well, Viva Topics is is the technical solution that's going to help us solve that one as well. So it's making it easier to discover and use that content. However, you need a certain type of structure in your tenant. Now, it's not about which SharePoint sites you create. It's not about the fact that you've got millions of users. It's about the content being actively used. And we've also got to actively manage Viva topics to really get the most out of it. So um, you do want a good amount of content in your Microsoft 365 tenant. Ideally, millions of documents, okay? You do want active use but there is no minimum user when i say it's made the biggest difference for me i'm an independent trainer my content is only used by me but viva topics because i'm actively using that content is discovering that content collating it into the topics generating topics pages and surfacing content that I'd forgotten I'd written. It has saved me hours of rewriting content by checking the topic page for the session for the training I'm going to deliver and then finding the documents that I've already put together and reusing those. So yes, it is suitable for any size of organization. It's not necessarily a personal management knowledge tool. A personal knowledge management tool, but it does help um, even if you are small. And you'll start to see if you use Outlook Web app and you have Viva Topics, you're starting to see um, topics being underlined in your emails and it's starting to roll out to Teams as well, where people mention keywords in a message and you can hover over that keyword and pull up the page of that knowledge as well. So this is going to, if you deploy Viva Topics, it can be transformative for unlocking that content that you've got hidden away in your Microsoft 365 tenants. So how do you switch it on? Licenses. Um, honestly, I'm so sad. I can't tell you that this is 
the only Viva product that you do have to purchase a license for, but we do have a little treat for you. OK, well, a little tip more than a treat. So once you've assigned the licenses, you've got to run the setup wizard. Now, the hardest part then is waiting. It takes about a week before you start getting meaningful knowledge being discovered by um, Viva Topics. So you switch it on, you go through the wizard, you set up your SharePoint site where your topics are going to surface, you wait. If you're lucky, you'll get topics within a day, but usually it's about a week before you really start seeing them. You review the topics that have been discovered by that have been suggested and then you can publish your topics. You can also convert your managed metadata into topics. OK, so if you've got if you've invested in setting up the term store, you can convert those terms into topics. And then Viva Topics will go and discover the content related to that topic. On to the licensing. As I say, unfortunately, it's not included. Um, but we can um, use a trial and Viva Topics does actually have a three month trial for 50 users. So it's a significantly better trial than many other um, Microsoft 365 products, but you do have to purchase the license to make full use of Viva Topics. And if you buy just the Viva Topics license, you do get that indexing that I'm describing. You do get the topic cards. You do get the topics highlighted inside your SharePoint pages, your messaging in Outlook, currently only Outlook for web. If you're a fan of the Outlook desktop app, you're going to need to become a fan of the Outlook web app as well. Um, and it, uh, Teams is coming soon as well. I've seen that starting to roll out in a couple of test tenants. OK. Um, but the Viva Suite. When we light that up, we've got additional integrations and there's some really exciting things on the roadmap, isn't there, Moretta? But it always is. And uh, and as we had already, you've spoken a lot about, you have these topic cards in the team chat is coming up as well. Um, and you have the, the, the Q&A routing, uh, auto routing. And that is something interesting to think about because I love topics. I mean, I'm coming from SharePoint world and the metadata and all of that. So, but, but bringing in, in uh, Viva topic is actually quite magical. Yeah, because you, you get your own Wikipedia, but it's much more than that. And for example, it doesn't only bring information in from SharePoint, but also, for example, if you are using ServiceNow for your IT support. So if I'm working in IT support and I'm in a Teams conversation in a shared channel with, with the rest of the uh, support team or, or in a different forum, I start writing something about um, a topic. And then, of course, these topic pages will show up and not only from whatever I have in SharePoint, but it's also whatever I have in in service now. And not only that, which is is coming here, I will also bring up the experts. So that means because if I'm working in IT support, I will not know everything about anything, everything. Right. So then it's important. But there are some people in the company who are experts on these different areas and by trickling up that information. If if I have written uh, in my Delve profile, for example, that I'm an expert in SharePoint, I will come up as an expert in that list uh, on that uh, topic page, for example. That is really, really good. And because uh, then you can delegate that responsibility to answer and get good answers instead of me having to find and ask around in the company who is the expert on on this and that. Now I can find them by just mentioning the word in a, in a Teams channel conversation, for example. And also they're adding more external resources because there might be other resources that you would like also to, the, uh, the Viva topics to find information from. Because what happens is that when you turn on that 
uh, Viva topping and it start to chew on your content, so to speak, as uh, Sarah said, uh, it will start organizing, not only finding, but it will also start organizing and suggest pages. And that being said, what is important both for Viva topic and for the learning uh, is to make sure you have roles that knows uh, these things, because if you want to put up the Viva learning, you need to have a, a learning responsible who should define what kind of learning you want to see. And when it comes to topic, you need to have a knowledge management manager who is then responsible to clean up basically what you're getting in the Viva topic, because you will get a SharePoint page or you define a SharePoint site which will then create all the SharePoint pages. And as the Viva topic is chewing on all your content, there will come up, like Sarah said, some surprises that you had forgotten about, and maybe you want to keep some of them and maybe some not. And this way you need to have somebody who can make those decisions and also delegate to others, because maybe finance departments are those who are, uh, those who should decide on what uh, content and information should be taken care of and which should be obsolete. So there are different people who should give, have different, uh, different responsibilities. And that means this enhances uh, knowledge management because then you can also have, uh, yeah, delegated that responsibility. So pay attention to the, the roadmap. There's a lot coming and also for different languages because now there are a few, but you know, it keeps moving and keeps changing, so it will evolve into more languages as well. So what else is happening? Yeah, we have some benefits, of course. I just joined a company and I don't know who has to write the information and how to find it fast. Have we ever been in that situation? You know, these people, they're talking three letter language and nobody, I don't understand what they're talking about. If you have, if you have write this three letter word, into a, a Teams chat or a conversation, then I can find it because it's very easy, easy, much easier to onboard uh, new resources because all acronyms and three letter words, all this uh, tribe language, as we sometimes call it, uh, that you have to have been working there for six months before you have any idea what they're talking about. This you can find. That is an easy example of how, how Viva topics can help. But not only that, and I'm not encouraged to share my knowledge as this is regarded as showing off. Have you ever been in that situation? Don't take that much place. You know, who do you think you are? Right? Of course you should show what you know. You should share it, working out loud and even thinking out loud. Because when you do that, I love working out loud because to share my knowledge with a view, others might find it helpful and others might help me improve my work. That is the great work-life balance. Because why should I wait to share something before it, until it's finished? I start drafting it, and then my colleagues are helping out to make sure this is good. And then others can also find it. Instead of them having to spend a lot of hours producing something, then I can just pick up what I have done and value add it. Saving us all for time and, and efforts. So yeah, now it's exciting to talk about Viva and the new LAO. What is that, Sarah? Or as it says, the Lisley, maybe I was talking about that. Yes, I, think it's <laughs> I was listening, but we're going to hand over to Leslie. Yeah, it's back to me to now um, close off the session. So thank you, my fellow um, Viva navigator and the Viva realist. So it's back to the Viva, the Viva visionary here. Um, and I've got my um, binoculars on and um, I'm looking down the down the road to the future um, and towards the end of the year where um, we're expecting the um, Microsoft to launch Viva Ally. We understand that it was just announced probably about 
maybe a week ago or two weeks ago that this module will actually be called Viva Goals. Um, so this is going to help with um, objectives and key results setting. So we've all in, in the organisation, this is kind of like we've all experienced, you know, our personal development. We're given objectives and responsibilities, but can we clearly see how that tracks up to the, um, the, the, the ultimate key results of the company? So this module is going to really help us um, um, with understanding that and also being part of a team so there's a lot more to come out about um about viva goals um over the coming months so um so listen out for that um oh i've better request control i haven't done that yet do, do, do. Oh, can one of the, yep. uh no i think so. if someone can move me on actually because it's not okay. yeah Mar Mar you can yeah. just move the slide on thank you yeah. So um, we've got um, three business benefits here um, again, so it can often take weeks, if not months to find out if I'm on track with my objectives and I have no idea how my efforts um, actually um, uh, support the, the, uh, the top line of um, revenue of sa or, or sales of the company or, you know, the mission of the company. Um, next, um, tap on the next slide to get the pop up. So great time saver now as we now go straight into conversations at our monthly meeting to track our individual objectives against business performance in a nice dashboard. So helping to improve our productivity. Next slide, please. So I'm a new manager and I'm finding it challenging setting my direct reports objectives so that they can clearly see how they align to company strategy. And I've got OKR examples, objectives and key result examples of how to set goals There's the key word there that are defined and quantified. And these can be um, used as reference for developing our own goals. This is easy to reach shared content. And I think there's one more. Oh, so that's the end of that's the end of the kind of like the, or the beginning of the business benefits. But we're now going to just take you into um, an idea that has grown over the last well, probably eight months around this idea of of um, Viva Explorers, um, and there are now. 13 of us in the whole wide world we are all um mvps and we've uh, and we've we've uh, the 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 amazing thing about this rich tapestry of this employee experience of of viva is that it's going to take as you have already heard an awful lot of kind of like diverse backgrounds um you know it's, this is not just about it anymore this is about people in um, internal communications knowledge management um the the training department hr organizational development there's lots of different disciplines and experiences that is needed now to come together like never before for and made it easier for um, to, to enhance um, a, a, the employee experience. So um, we've got a mission statement. So why are we? Why have we come together like this? So people are the heart and soul of every digitalization project. Viva Explorers are passionate, and we draw on our diverse origins to influence a serendipitous employee-centric technology move movement. That's really important here, and I'll just elaborate on that in a second. An employee centric technology movement enabling a modern empathic workforce mindset so um what we what we're trying to do the 13 of us is create um a, we don't want to create a champion program. We don't want to create a, just a community or a network because this is like the whole world that we're trying to um, uh, uh, encourage and into using these um, these reimagined tools. So we've, we're describing it as a movement to make it a little bit more unstructured and free flowing. So um, next slide, please. We're just going to introduce you to who we are um, at this point in time, and then we'll probably be adding more. But we are all. Um, um, saying that we are MVP so that we are on a level playing field and we all operating kind of like from the same um, hymn sheet at this time and we recognize for our um, individual experiences. So there's five of us that have come out of um, a partnership, a Microsoft partner in Cloudway. So there's myself as the, the first lone nut as the Viva visionary with the, with the art of the, of the possible. Um, and then um, the next one that joined um, was actually Sarah Fenner and she's on, on the next floor on the next slide so we have come from we don't work together but we were the first ones I think to kind of like 
uh, do a kind of like a collective presentation around uh, Viva um, back about eight months ago in, in the UK at, at um, an event called um, the South Coast Summit um, in, um, in the UK, in the south of England. So we were the first ones to kind of like pulled together something a bit like this and we've just elaborated on each time. The next um, the next one to start following and joining us is, is Moretta, who's my colleague. And as you've seen, she's got her roadmap and Moretta is a specialist in SharePoint. My specialism is actually employee communications um, and, um, and Yammer and user adoption. So that's what I'm bringing to the table. Then we've also got Stella Hansen, who is not only an MVP, but he's a regional director um, for and in Microsoft in the MVP program. He's also the CEO of Cloudway and um, uh, who's, uh, as I said, a Microsoft partner. His specialism, specialism is digital well-being. So he loves, well, he loves all the Viva um, modules, but particularly is keen on Viva Insights that Kat presented. Then we've got my colleague Martin, um, Morten Hallebro. He's in um, Sweden and um, he is a, um, a um, Microsoft 365 architect. So he's there as our medic. Um, around making sure that the policies are all um, uh, positioned correctly. We've also got Nikki Chappell, um, who specialises in governance, compliance and security. So you can see that we've got this rich um, skill set that we're bringing to, um, to, to the table to share our knowledge as a, in a collective. And the next ones we've got here, as I said, we've, we've met Sarah um, and she's a super duper uh, Microsoft certified trainer. And then we've got Kevin McDonald, who was on the call earlier. He's really kind of specializing at this time in um, looking at um, uh, Viva goals. So Viva um, OKRs and also um, on topics, but again, across the board, like all of us. And he's a senior cloud consultant at, at another partner called CPS in the UK. We've got Chirag Patel that some of you might know Chirag. He runs the UK MC M365 user group. Um, so um, yeah, he's he's uh, running the charge for um, the um, for you know users across the UK, and he is our enabler, and he has a, a huge spanner. <laughs> then we have Zoe Wilson, and Zoe is a um, a um, she's also from another Microsoft partner called Agilis in um, in the UK um, and she's our Viva Dreamer and she's safely and securely working in the cloud and um, yeah, yeah she's a, a big part of this um, Viva movement as well. We've also got another MVP, RD and CEO um, uh, that's operating um, out of Austria um, and she's with the partner uh, called At Work and Martina is our Viva strategist and she has um, a jigsaw because she's brilliant at bringing the full picture of um, all the Microsoft 365 tools together for us um, with um, a perfect jigsaw puzzle. We have Anna. We're not quite sure what's happened to Anna today, but we will be reaching out to her and see if she's OK. And she's actually a, um, a an airline pilot now. She's uh, taken on a brand new skill, but her specialism in this regard is um, HR Dynamics. So there she is in her HR Dynamics um, human resources jet. And then we you heard from Kat. Kat's one of our cheerleaders, motivating engagement, and she did a fantastic session earlier on Viva Insights. And we've also got the um, new one that we're just about to onboard, which is the wonderful Sue Hanley. Um, and she is um, a information architect, a knowledge management expert, and she's written many books on SharePoint governance. So we're really looking forward to getting um, Sue on board with us. And she's in the USA. So we, we're trying to cover all continents. So for us to, to suddenly see that this group has popped up in India was just complete joy that we know now that we are kind of like spanning the whole world. So we'll probably be reaching out to some of you um, after this session. Um, next slide, please. Moretta, thank you. So how can you um, get involved in becoming more of an, an a Viva enthusiast. Um, so as I said, this is a movement that we're trying to encourage. It's not a, just a champion closed off little network. So there, there are the um, user groups that are available. Um, there is a, a Viva um, 
community on Twitter, but that might be if you can't get access to that, then please contact me and um, I will um, um, I request that you join it. But that's been actually been set up by Microsoft itself for the community. Um, Kevin McDonald is working on a website for us, so that should be up and, run, up and running shortly um, where we, all of us that are um, describing ourselves as Reaver Explorers, we've all got our own blog sites as well, so they will be accessible from there too. And then from a Microsoft point of view, the ones that we have discovered are listed here. Um, they are they're actually kind of like quite low in um, uh, 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 engagement at the moment, but this is still very early days. Um, and I'm sure over the coming months, if not years, they're going to start picking up pace. So there's uh, there's a Microsoft Viva group um, on the tech community. There's also one that specializes in insights. There's another more, I think, more open group. This might be closed off as well. This Microsoft Viva twi Twitter group, which is uh, I'm not sure if that's, I think that is different. Yeah, that one is, yeah, I have to just la leave that one there. I think that's closed off at the moment, but there is a Microsoft Fever group that's opened up on LinkedIn and there is another one, another community group on LinkedIn. So, and apparently there's about another 10 to add to this, this, this list from, um, from Microsoft as well. So there's, there's lots of, of opportunities to get involved and show that you are really enthusiastic about changing the employee experience for the better. I have put on here, and I don't know if you're going to be able, we haven't got time to show it unless we have got a gap in the schedule. Um, but Mer Mer sorry, can you just go back? Because there's, there, if there is time at the end of this, because Anna didn't wasn't able to join. There is two. Um, actually, I think we, we probably. If you, I think if we click on um, influence, does it work on that word on the top there? Let me see what does it open. Okay, it does work. Great. So. I came across this on LinkedIn about a month ago, and it's an old campaign by um, by Apple. Um, and it's about thinking differently when Steve Jobs was trying to launch the Apple Mac. Um, so this was a, a very what well, ended up as a very successful campaign um, from Apple, and it was bringing together people that think differently because they were trying to encourage people to think differently about this new amazing computer called Apple Mac. And he and this is what we were trying to do as Beaver Explorers. We're all kind of got got. Uh, different skill sets and um, as you can see from our different personas and our different um, props, me with my binoculars and um, uh, Moretta with her roadmap and you've got, uh, you had Anna in her aeroplane and you had Chirag with his, uh, with his brilliant spanner. Um, we've all got different skill sets and we're all coming together to think differently but collectively about changing how the world of work works. So I just happened upon that and I just thinking oh how marvellous is that and also so to bring together the idea that um, that we can talk about um, other other uh, technology companies, because at the end of the day, um, in, with particularly with regard to Viva Connections, you have um, the idea that we are trying to encourage um, people to use their own devices um, that can now be, um, you know, um, uh, attached to the company, and that's not the right word, but um, uh, integrated into the company's devices by um, multi-factor authentication and um, SMS um, um, uh, integration as well, and that can happen, you know, a matter of seconds to, to have those those uh, personal devices made secure so those often the, those devices are going to be apple phones so i just love the idea of us uh, looking at this brilliant campaign by apple now and kind of like reinventing it and reimagining it as the viva explorers and a viva enthusiast movement so um, i'm glad that um, that link worked but moretta can you nip back to that to our main slide and then if we've got time as well, there's just if we can if we can get this to work and if you can't, then look it up afterwards. So there's the other one here is the Viva movement under the word enthusiastic Viva movement. But I'm not sure if this is going to work with sound. I just no. have to reshare with sound. Here, hold on. A yeah, second. if we've got time, because yeah. this is such a lot of fun. This is a I good think, one. Yeah, mm. and I think just so this is a, um, a video from probably about 20 years ago in America at a music festival and it's about turning um, 
one lone dancing nut, which you could say kind of like was me eight months ago about saying I'm a Viva visionary and then turning it into a, a leadership movement um, that's bringing people together. And I think it's quite you know, it's quite nice that we've gone through, you know, a number of sessions today and I know that we've all joined this as enthusiastic, you know, people that are um, enthusiastic about Viva. Um, and I, I think if you haven't seen this before, then hopefully this is going to work. It's only like um, kind of like two minutes long. How are we getting on? But if it doesn't work, then oh. Oh, we've got the word. Three minutes and go, dissect some lessons. First, of course, a leader needs the guts to stand alone and look ridiculous. But what he's doing is so simple, it's almost instructional. This is key. You must be easy to follow. Now here comes the first follower with a crucial role. He publicly shows everyone else how to follow. Notice how the leader embraces him as an equal. So it's not about the leader anymore. It's about them, plural. Notice how he's calling to his friends to join in. So it takes guts to be a first follower. You stand out and you brave ridicule yourself. Being a first follower is an underappreciated form of leadership. The first follower transforms a lone nut into a leader. If the leader is the flint, the first follower is the spark that really makes the fire. Now here's the second follower. This is a turning point. It's proof the first has done well. Now it's not a lone nut and it's not two nuts. Three is a crowd and a crowd is news. A movement must be public. Make sure outsiders see more than just the leader. Everyone needs to see the followers because new followers emulate followers, not the leader. Now here come two more people, then three more immediately. Now we've got momentum. This is the tipping point and now we have a movement. As more people jump in, it's no longer risky. If they were on the fence before, there's no reason not to join in now. They won't stand out, they won't be ridiculed, and they will be part of the in crowd if they hurry. And over the next minute, you'll see the rest who prefer to stay part of the crowd because eventually they'd be ridiculed for not joining. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how a movement is made. So let's recap what we've learned. If you are a version of the shirtless dancing guy all alone, remember the importance of nurturing your first few followers as equals, making everything clearly about the movement, not you. Be public, be easy to follow. But the biggest lesson here, did you catch it? Leadership is over glorified. Yes, it started with the shirtless guy and he'll get all the credit, but you saw what really happened. It was the first follower that transformed a lone nut into a leader. There's no movement without the first follower. See, we're told that we all need to be leaders, but that would be really ineffective. The best way to make a movement, if you really care, is to courageously follow and show others how to follow. When you find a lone nut doing something great, have the guts to be the first person to stand up and join in. So um, I'm so glad that worked. And every t I've I've seen that I don't know how many times, but it always makes me laugh. It always makes me smile. So um, so thank you for um, for bearing with us to uh, to uh, to hear that. So I th I think that's we've got one more slide. I think. Yes, so um, upskilling, the all important upskilling. We've tried to gather together amongst us um, and find all the different places that you can actually find out more about Viva. A lot of us on this call, I think, are really pr pretty um, sophisticated probably about, about Viva, otherwise we wouldn't have joined this session. But, uh, but there's probably people that are um, probably beginners and um you know but, but, but we've, we've, learning is an it's an every day every day is a school day so there's more links there about um how you can actually upskill um and just to finish off as i said all of us viva explorers and mvps we have got our um our blog site so there's links here to um to where you can find us um and i think on that note just a huge thank you to um to our sponsors and um, I will hand back to um, uh, yeah, follow follow them on these 